So hey everyone, my name is Riyad from Right at Home Realty. Hello everyone, it's Will Ellis from Right at Home Realty. Hello everybody, my name is Michelle Rickman and my business is Go For Girl, a personal concierge service here in Durham. Perfect. So Michelle, because you just said that you, what your business is, why don't you just give us a bit, you know, describe your business and what makes your business stand out? And I think it's such a cool concept. So I think everyone wants to hear about it. Thank you. So uh, yes, I am a personal concierge service and how I define that is my time is up for reservation to help your clients or anybody who doesn't have time for the daily demands and tasks of life. And that's really what it is. Um, I come from a uh, 13 years of working in a bank. So I offer admin support. But basically, when I left the full time job and took on the fuller job of being a domestic engineer, when I had my second child, it's basically everything I've learned and mastered that I now offer to others who are just overwhelmed and don't even know where to start. And I can look at it and be um, objective and know where to start and how to tackle it. Wow. So in terms of, of, of what, what you do, are you seeing more, I, I, you know you work with real estate agents, but are you seeing more families? And maybe are you, what's your clientele look like? Ooh, my clientele looks like uh, regular families, overwhelmed entrepreneurs, and people who want to focus on their own business, but yet they have a life and a home that need to be maintained as well. Um, so, you know, my services are, they're basically just time-based. So it, you know, we discuss what is your need and I'm getting a lot of purging, hacking, organization. So people like they see their spaces. Um, sometimes people want to work with me um, and it's really just helping them go through everything. And, and sometimes it's, they don't even want to deal with it. They just want it done. So, you know, we have conversations because a lot of times there's things in those spaces that they know they're there. They haven't seen them for a really long time. And it's just so that, you know, myself or my assistants can keep our eyes out for them um, so that we can put them aside and that they can have their items back. You know, the amount of money, the amount of money I have found is crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> Uncashed <laughs> checks, gift cards jewelry. Um, yeah, it's like I said, because I've got no attachment. And, and when I find it, you think it was my own items, how excited I get because, <laughs> you know, to me, it's like, it's like a treasure hunt sometimes. It really is. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Um, Thank you. So where, where are you originally from and tell us about your journey? So originally I was uh, born and raised in St. Thomas, Ontario. That's where, um, when my grandfather came to Canada after World War II, that's where they plunked him. So uh, that's where I grew up. And then I moved away at 19 and I went to um, Sheridan College in Oakville. And that kind of started my journey in the GTA. I went to Sheridan for marketing, three years graduated and then moved into Toronto and started uh, my first job is with like Foster Parents Plan of Canada. Very, very cool. And then I moved on to the Bank of Nova Scotia at Scotia Plaza. And I was there uh, up until I had my second child. So um, from that, you know, the business was truly created by my parents. So I was uh, in between jobs. Um, I had left one because they were looking for a cook, but they didn't want to cook. They wanted a chicken with its head cut off. And at this stage of life, I was like, mm, not for me. So I had asked to be let go. So my mom called and said, we would like to hire you as our personal concierge. And I'm like, great mom, what does that mean? So for them, they, um, they leave November 1st and they come back May 1st. And at that time, like I've, uh, this business was created, it'll be eight years this October that I created this. Oh. And um, they are snowbirds. So they needed somebody to check on the apartment for insurance purposes go through the mail and anything that needed to be dealt with at the mail, um, I would either call them, scan the paperwork, just so I knew what we were to do with it. And at tax time, I would pull out all their T4s and send it to their accountant. When they were returning, I would um, go and kind of tidy, give it a little dust because nobody had been there for six months. And they would send me a little grocery list because they had no food, just some items to kind of get them started. 
And it really started with that. And then people would ask, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And I would say yes. And then I realized, you know what? I'm going to focus on what I'm really good at. And so I've discovered that I'm really, really good at helping people go through their items, purging them, letting them go, downsizing, um, because I'm not attached to anything. And I can look at it objectively. And I've also discovered, you know, it's a bit of hand holding, a bit of psychology, you know, to help people maneuver through those transitions in life. Um, I'm never here to judge anybody because like I say, I'm not walking in your shoes. You're not walking in mine. I can just see like you're overwhelmed. And I just try to take that stress away from them and, and give them what they're looking for. Because most times people know exactly what they want done, how they want their space to look, but they just don't know where to start or they just don't want to do it. So that's where my time comes in. Wow. Do you have a team or is it just you by yourself or? It has been me, myself, and I. We seem to get along really well with management. Um, but <laughs> since, <laughs> thank you for laughing. I try to be, you know, but since October, I have um, taken on, there are two women that I've known for a very long time and I truly trust them and they work really well. They under, you know, they work with me. They understand what we're doing. And my goal for them is to be comfortable enough that I can give them clients to, to take on as well. So, you know, it was me, it kind of grew, then it shrunk and then COVID, everything just stopped, literally stopped for six months. So, you know, to still be here, I'm very grateful for that. So it's, you know, it was a challenge to stay relevant and, you know, because we offer custom hands-on help, how do you force people to have you in their home? That's the hard part, right? You know, and even now, like with, with Omicron going on, you know, myself and my team, we are vaccinated, our choice, but we still wear masks and it's just a protective for everybody while we're going through this, this wave at the moment. So when you said, so this interview is going to be long, <laughs> I'm interested here. So when you said COVID stopped your business in its, in its tracks for six months, mm -hmm. what, what restarted it? What was it that, that restarted your business? And did you modify anything um, with us for a while? You, to be honest, it was, I think people started spending more time online. So I got discovered. And okay. when people started being comfortable, when things started opening up, I would get busy again. And then every time they shut it down, it literally, everybody would, you know, I want to say the fear of God, but you know, the fear and they would, and I, what am I, I can't force it. Right. So I literally just had to accept it, go with the flow, exhale. And during that six months, I binged watched Mad Men because it was one series I wanted to watch. And <laughs> right. I also, right. No, right? yeah, it phenomenal. So, yeah, it was, I was, I really loved it. And the, what I did while I was watching TV was I knit. So I had been knitting lap blankets for seniors, uh, for the germ community for about three years. So when COVID hit, I actually did, um, had the young woman who does my social media do a post, Hey, do you have wool? And I was walking and picking up wool from people's houses. I go for a walk, pick it up off their porch. And I knit, um, probably 25, now I couldn't do lap blankets because the seniors homes were closed. So I flipped it over to cancer blankets for oh, people that nice. are receiving cancer treatments at Lake Ridge. So my neighbor across the street is that, well, she just retired, but she was a nurse and connected me with this woman. And I, yeah, I just knit everything and then dropped them off. So it was just I try to utilize my time in a way that was still, you know, useful to others, even though I couldn't be in people's homes. That's great. Wow. Thank you. What, what motivates you every day? Hmm. Uh, to be of help. I really like, I really just love helping people. And to, sometimes I get the biggest high off of their faces when they've looked at something for years and I can get it done in three or four hours and they're just gobsmacked and, you know, so grateful. And I'm like, Hey, you know, look, I'm just here to help. And that's really what it is. There's no, uh, nothing ulterior in it. It's just, you have something that needs to be done. I can do it. Let me do it. Wow. Love it, that it's very, you know, it, it's <laughs> very, you know, because when people think of a personal concierge, they think, oh, you have to be really rich and all this other stuff. And, it, and I, I really just make it very simple. And it's not even, like I said, that's why I've just made it time-based. 
you have my time. And I literally, like, if you book me for four hours, I set the timer and off I go. And the biggest thing that um, I've forgotten half the time is doing a video or going back and asking people for testimonials, referrals. So it has been like a whole learning curve because this business was created and then we formed everything else, if that makes sense. I kind of did it backwards. No, 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 that makes sense. Uh, yeah. know, a lot of realtors are like that too. We're like that too. We kind of just go and then, oh, I need systems or I need this, I need that, you know, and we all get in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, so, you know. I love it because I'm never doing the same thing every day. And if I am, it's different people, it's different stuff, different situations. So it's never the same. And that's, I love it. I mean, like I've met some incredible people and uh, yeah, I, I, it just blows my mind. Like last year I had a gentleman, um, he was coming to Canada, him and his wife were having a baby by a surrogate. She couldn't get in because of the visas. He could, but needed help. He was coming from um, Malaysia and I'm actually half Maltese and his head office is in Malta. And I'm like, I could not make this up if I wow. tried. Yeah, like I've had some people from like overseas, like I've had somebody from Belgium that hired me to do some work in Oakville for them to send some items. I had this gentleman that needed help getting baby stuff and uh, you know doing all the running around. And then he also has this huge company so I was communicating with his PA in Malaysia, his head office in Malta, and because I was printing off documents and running them to him into the city because he didn't have that access. So it's really like, how can I be of help to you? And if it's not in my wheelhouse, I'm not gonna do it. Like right. I, don't take, right. I don't take stuff on for money and it, like if it's not my strength, I'm not gonna do it. But more than likely, I know somebody now that would, um, be able to help you with that task. Wow. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> so seeing that you, you live in Durham, uh, what are some of your favorite local businesses? Ooh, favorite locals. Well, um, I love to support, there's a restaurant in Ajax. It's called Angelica's great breakfast. Oh yeah. Oh my oh, God. Yeah. So that, much that, food. That's that's my go-to. I go there all the time. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you been to oh, Lord now Scrambles? That's the other one. Have you tried Scrambles? I have not. No, no. I, I always go to Angelique's. So just just one of those things I go to. Yeah. So do you know? Okay. So where the giant tiger is across the street, there's like a Remax okay. that sits on the corner, and then beside it is a little building. And honestly, I think it's only got about five or six tables. Another great little place is Scrambles. I'm writing this down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I love a good breakfast place. Definitely. Um, you know, there's a cook. She has her things. I think it's in that urban market that opened up in Oshawa. And it's, right. I love to cook. And that's Chef Jeannie. Her stuff is incredible. Her food's really, really good. And I've actually helped her um, when... COVID there was when they first started there was um, somebody had created like um, got all the businesses in Durham together and they were creating I don't know like baskets or boxes or whatever and people could order stuff and so she was doing all these quiches but needed help rolling out all the dough so I spent two or three days just rolling out pie dough and putting them in so all she had to do was fill it in so um, wow. you know my my skill set is very wide because I love to cook, I love to bake. So prepping stuff, doing anything baking I love. I helped a seamstress who would do custom clothing for people. So my Nana used to be a seamstress. And so I know how to pin and cut out patterns. So I was hired to do that, um, wow. you know, just for a few hours because then I could have it all cut out for her and then she could sew it all to get caught up in everything. So like I said, you'd be surprised, you know, the things that I can, help you with <laughs> wow. wow that's amazing what's your uh what's one of the biggest surprises of owning your own business the amount of work that it takes <laughs> you know and and the other thing too is learning the whole social media <laughs> game because that, that you know yeah, yeah it is very tough and trying to under like wrap your brain around it you know like I'm getting like, I mean, I'm listening to older people. They're like, oh, you need to do this, this, this. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not relevant. That's not going to help, you know, and they don't even get it. So, you know, I think I'm still trying to figure out the whole 
game. And that's how I have to look at it is that it's a bit of a social media game, like, cause they keep changing the algorithms and all this other stuff. And I just try to be relevant and be seen. Right. Yeah. Now like your I, job, you're, you're also meeting a lot of unique people. Has, has any kind of client surprised you with their, with their request or, or have you been surprised by your ability to help someone meet their daily goal by you going in there to support them? 